You want to appreciate, you want to appreciate God's presence and God's leading in our prayer today. We are looking at uh, the book of Genesis chapter 2 as we pray for our families. Uh, Genesis chapter 2, a familiar text. Uh, I'm reading from verse 22 to verse 24. Then the, the rib which the Lord had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Um, that God caused a deep sleep and took a rib and made Eve. And as Adam wakes up and God brings Eve to Adam, Adam exclaims, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And then Moses, the author says, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. I want to emphasize one point this morning as we pray for families. That this regards living in the presence of God, in the very presence of God. I want to emphasize the presence of God, living in the presence of God as families in this text. The, I've been a marriage officer for some time. And over the years, I've seen the man and the wife to be being led or being escorted by either a father, an uncle, and our aunt, sometimes a mother, uh, down the aisle. And sometimes I ask or, uh, or any marriage officer uh, who will be uh, conducting the ceremony, who gives this man to this woman? Or who gives this woman to this man? And uh, one will stand up, one relative will stand up to signal that I do. In this chapter, uh, there are apparently two uh, scenarios that the Moses highlights or the Bible highlights. He, the, 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 the last one, the second scenario, he says that uh, therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. They shall leave uh, both sides of the family. The other scenario, the first one, is that Adam and Eve didn't have a father and a mother uh, who was escorting them down the aisle during that marriage ceremony. God did that. He was the one who was bringing the wife to Adam. And uh, he was the one who also was uh, the officiating minister of the day. So that uh, they didn't leave, the first couple, they didn't leave their father nor their mother. They lived in the presence of God. So that the future couples that come after Adam, though they might leave their mother and their fathers, they continue to live in the presence of God. As I emphasize that, I want to emphasize this point, paramount, 
that uh, the father-in-law of Adam was God himself, who brought the woman to Adam. God was the father-in-law of Adam. And also God was the father-in-law of Eve. So that as they continue in their marriage relationship, they were living in the presence of God so that as they treated one another, they had to bear in mind that they're treating a child of God in the presence of the very God who gave for marriage. So that as couples, as family members, whether you are married or not, whether you have a, husband, a spouse or not, we live in the presence of God. And when we mistreat one another, we are mistreating a child of God in, his, in the very presence of the Father. So that uh, as we have our in-laws, biologically, and we might be very far physically, or even if we are close physically, we are on our own somewhere. But the ultimate father-in-law, the father of whom we have married our, his child is watching over us. So that as we live with one another, we ought to remember that we are living in the very presence of God who gave. Even as parents, it applies that the children that we have are given by God so that they are God's children. When we mistreat them, any abuse that takes place takes place in the very presence of God. Every careless word that is said, everything that is said, is said in the very presence of God. As a father, as a husband, whatever you do to your wife or to your children, you do that to the children of God, who is the father in the very presence of, he, of this, this father. And when we begin to think about that, that uh, God is my father-in-law. The person I'm married to is a daughter of God. And the children that I have are children of God. And if I have that mindset, I live in the very presence of God. The very presence of God will consume, will evade everything that we do and say to one another as family members. Because we realize that we are married, we are connected to people that are special in our lives because God is special, their father. And hence, that's why the Bible says that when Jesus came here, he became our brother. He became our kinsman redeemer. He became human like us so that we can associate with him and he can redeem planet Earth and all the inhabitants because he's related by blood to us. And therefore we can say our father in heaven because we are brothers to Jesus. We are brothers and sisters to Jesus. And hence we are brothers and sisters to, to one another. He becomes our kinsman redeemer. And this becomes very dear, very dear relationships. This becomes very close that we are living in the presence of God. As Christians, we are called to live a life that is in the presence to God, in the presence of God, in the very presence of God. As we relate in the family, we are relating to the children of God. How do we become prayer warriors and succeed in our prayers? And our prayers are answered by the God who is the father of the people that we are abusing. How do we dare to be prayer warriors and believe that God will answer our prayers 
when we can take care of the children of the God that we are asking to, to the father that uh, is listening and watching what we do with his children. That makes our prayers and our lifestyle to be intentional, to think deeply that when I say my father who is in heaven and we are praying, when we say our father who is in heaven, this includes even my neighbors, this includes my children, this includes my wife, this includes my, wife, my husband, that this is the father that I'm talking to, is the father of this very child. I want us for the rest of the day to think about that, that the people that I live in my house, that the children to the father that I'm talking to and requesting to intervene in my affairs, that when I bless them, God blesses them, blesses me. When I hurt them, I'm hating God. And when I come to him in prayer, he doesn't listen to my prayers because I didn't listen to the cries of those I, I am with in my family. God, the Bible says, he led Eve to, his, to Adam and woke Adam from sleep. Is the one who gave Adam this gift of a whole human being to him. And God gives us gifts of spouses, gifts of children, gifts of family members. And let us look at them this day and say, God, you are a merciful and wonderful God that I relate to your children. And as I speak and as I interact with them, May I live in the presence of this very God who gave. May I remember that I'm living in the very presence of God who is watching about, uh, for me, who is watching over us, who is caring and loving. And uh, just as Adam and Eve were living in the very presence of God, we are living in the very presence of God. May God bless the reading of his word this morning. Amen. 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 Pastor, Dr. Prakono, uh, may you please pray for us. So we pray together. Heavenly Father, we want to realize that being Christians, we are called to be brothers and sisters to Jesus Christ and to one another. To realize that uh, we are your children. When we get married, we are marrying your children. When we have children, we are taking care of your children. That as we take care of one another, as we live with one another, whatever we say, whatever we do to each other, we are doing this in the very presence of God who gave. We pray, Lord, that as we are prayer warriors, as we endeavor to talk to you and believe in prayer, may we realize that we are living in your very presence that we want our answers, the, our, the, the, our prayers to be heard and be answered by a loving and caring Father. But may the care that we have upon us influence us in, way, in the ways we care, loving relationships, ways and kind acts of kindness that will show to other children, to the other families, to other members of the family of God. We pray, Lord, for every family that is represented here. We come to this prayer meeting with different needs, different circumstances, different pains in the midst of the pandemic of coronavirus. We pray, Heavenly Father, that we will intervene. Most of all, may we feel the presence and the love of God in our, in our souls that will move us to be loving and being kind because we live in your very presence. We pray, Lord, that as we come before your presence, may nothing of our own, nothing of our doing and our saying may hinder our prayers. Hear our prayers because of your loving kindness and for your forgiveness in our lives. We pray, Lord, for our family members that are near and far. Some are in lockdowns. We pray, Lord, that whatever the needs are, whatever the challenges are, be there with them 
and hear our prayers today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh,